हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल आई टी जे ओलम्पियाड एंड ए पी फिजिक्स विद अम्बरीश टुडे आई हैव ब्रॉट एन एक्सट्रीमली चैलेंजिंग प्रॉब्लम फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम पार्ट एस सिक्स कंडक्टेड इन नारायण लास्ट ईयर एंड दिस इज एन एक्सट्रीमली टफ प्रॉब्लम प्रैक्टिकली नो स्टूडेंट वॉज एबल टू अटैम्प्ट इट इन द एग्जामिनेशन टाइम सो लेट स्ट्रेट अवे गेट इन टू द प्रॉब्लम सो वी हैव अ क्यूबिकल फ्रेम ऑफ साइड लेंथ टूवेल्व made by welding thin identical resistor each of length l as shown in the figure okay so here we have the uh, cube and current is entering from here and it's exiting from here and uh, the so many connections are there it's supposed to be a cube so okay uh, current i enters into this network at one of the corners and exits from its body diagonal uh, body diagonally opposite corner okay so uh, arrows are uh, shown so this is supposed to be i1 and this arrow is supposed to be i2 and this arrow is supposed to be i8 this arrow is i3 this is i4 this is i5 and this is i6 and this is i7 and this is your i10 this is i9 so that way all the arrows are marked with some symbol current symbol okay and uh, we are supposed to comment on the four options uh, which are given below and uh, i have added one more part to the question uh, we also are supposed to find the effective resistance of the cube across the shown tap in and tap out point so this is the tap in point and this is the tap out point and uh, we can assume for simplicity that each resistance is one ohm let like each small side so you can say from edge to corner and everywhere all these small small straight segments are all one ohm each okay so if you want you can uh, pause the video and try it out uh, it will take a good amount of time so take good 15 20 minutes if you uh, really want to get through the solution and uh, i'll straight away now get into my analysis of the problem so let's see now uh, outrightly you can see uh, that there is going to be some kind of uh, symmetries involved in this problem and you also know that the current flow is because of potential difference and not the absolute potentials so i have tried to utilize this technique for uh, uh, visualizing the symmetry easily so without loss of generality i have assumed this potential this node potential as plus 1 and this poten node potential a tap out point potential as minus 1 and now some symmetries you'll be able to readily see in this cube so uh, i will show them one by one highlight them one by one so uh, you can see that we can classify the points into various types so we can classi classify them into edge centers uh, face centers and the corners and then even in the edge centers we can have two types of edge centers so for example this is the tap in point and this is the edge center near to the tap in point this is the edge center near to the tap in point and then there is another edge center near to the tap in point so if i assume this potential to be v uh, e then this is also e and this is also e because and similarly for the tap out point the nearby uh, edge center so this is this should be minus e this other uh, minus e and this is another minus e so these are the edge centers which are near to the uh, tap in point or tap out point and by symmetry if that is plus 1 this is e this is this is and this is minus 1 so this must be minus e so i have marked like this but then there is another kind of edge center uh, which is far away from the tap in point or tap out point and there are six such edge centers for example you can see that this is an edge center i am going to prove that all these edge centers the far away edge centers are going to be having zero potential that i'll make you visualize in a short while but just try to see how many such edge centers are there so from here you can see this is such an edge center okay which is far away then uh, uh this and then we have this this point so there will be six such points so this and this similarly uh, you have uh, uh, in the rear edge also so uh, these are the far away uh, edge centers okay so uh, which are not not close to the uh, tap in or tap out points so now uh we'll see why these far away edge centers have zero potential in a short while so similarly we have corner points so corner points suppose this potential is c so this potential should also be c this potential should also be c and then we have face center points oh, oh, by the way if these three are c then uh, for, uh, for the corners near the tap out point this should be minus c this should be minus c and this should be minus c by symmetry okay 
similarly we have face center so this is the face center near to the top end point another face center near to the top end point and another face center near to the so this is f this is f this is f so the other three should be this is minus f and this is minus f and another one should be there yes this is minus f so three minus f okay so uh, we have uh, settled for the corner potential and the face potentials and the near edge potentials by symmetry i hope there's no problem with that now i need to settle the far away edge potentials and why i have marked them as zero that i'll make you visualize so i have made this graphic small graphic in geogebra and here you can readily see this is the cube but uh, we are seeing this in an isometric view and here you can readily see that which edge centers i'm talking about so this is the top end point suppose you are looking along the body diagonal and this is the plus one potential point so you look at this point and this point they are symmetrically located with respect to this uh, top end point right so obviously they should have same potential and similarly uh, this point and this point they are symmetrically located and this point and this point they are also symmetrically located with respect to the top end point and because of the body diagonal symmetry if they are symmetrically located with respect to the top end points they are also symmetrically located with respect to the top out point therefore all these points must have zero potential why because top end point has got a potential of plus one and the tap out potential point which is exactly in eclipse of this and you can see the dotted lines uh, and the uh, uh, tap tap out point is just behind this green dot so this is the tap end point and the, the, the tap out point is not visible so from the tap tap out point also you can see that all these points they are uh, symmetrically located okay so these all these six points they are perfectly in between uh, the tap in and tap out point and therefore all of them should have zero potential okay now uh, once i have uh, classified the potentials now my job becomes simple so by carefully utilizing the symmetry i've reduced the number of unknowns quite a bit so now how many unknowns do i have i have uh, uh, f i have c and i have e only three types of unknowns are there and so now my job should be simple i know i can uh, utilize node voltage uh, method uh, for all the three types of potentials so i can write node potential uh, equation the junction law at e i can write junction law at f and i can write junction law at any of the c's okay so uh, let's see what we get so uh, node equation at face center so let's see let's take any uh, of the face center so from here you can see uh, okay so uh, uh, okay this is f and this is a one okay so one two f, f. okay fine so this is f and this is zero so here the current going must be f minus zero upon one so this is what i have written as f by one Similarly, here it should be F minus 0 by 1. So, resistor is 1 ohm. So, F by 1 plus F by 1. Then we have this one F minus E by 1. And this one is also F minus E by 1. So, and the sum of uh, all, and there should be another one going down. Uh, okay, uh, that is again, uh, there's one body center which I have not shown. But the body center also is obviously at 0 potential. Okay, so uh, this one uh, is 0 potential I have shown over here. So this last term is for F minus zero, which is the body center potential uh, by one that is equal to zero. So that's the equation one. Now similarly, we, I can make an equation at the corner. So from corner, you can see this current plus this current plus this current must be zero. So C plus C and plus C minus E, this should be equal to zero. That's the equation two. And similarly, I can make an equation at the edge center. So take any of the edge centers. So this cur current plus this current plus this current plus this current all the sum of these uh, four, four currents must be zero. So that's what I've written. So E minus one and then E minus F, then E minus C and then uh, E minus F for this one. All these four sum is zero. So that give me, gives me the equation one. I don't have to worry about the resistance because I've taken all of them to be one ohm. So now I have a system of three equations and I have three unknowns. So now I can easily solve. So I just uh, plugged it into uh, CAS and that's what the uh, solution is. So E is 15 by 43, C is 5 by 43 and F is 6 by 43. Now I have introduced uh, another uh, uh, current which is I0 which was not there in the original problem. So I am calling this current as I0 because I know that if I is current entering over here this I0 must be I by 3. Similarly here I by 3 and there also I by 3. By symmetry it will be I0 will be I by 3. And now I know that in any branch the current uh, that is flowing is directly proportional to the 
potential difference across it so across uh, this branch current is i naught and the potential is 1 minus e now for any branch if i want to find out the uh, current what i can do i can simply take the potential difference across that divide it by the potential across uh, potential difference across this i naught and then multiply that by i naught i am uh, simply using the proportionality ratio and proportion okay that way i can find out current in just about any branch so now now it's pretty simple now it's a uh, simple uh, calculation that's all so if i want to find out i3 so where is i3 this is i3 so this potential difference is c minus 0 okay so c minus 0 upon uh, 1 minus e into i naught okay that's what i've written c minus 0 upon 1 minus e into i naught and if you calculate that that comes out to be uh, i3 comes out to be 5 by 84 okay 5 by 84 and uh, a option c a option says uh, i3 is 55 by 84 so obviously a option is wrong a option is incorrect okay now similarly uh, i can uh, calculate now uh, i8 so i8 uh, was also asked in one of the options i think in b option we had to comment on i8 yes so b option i8 is uh, again i8 must be equal to i3 so i calculated i3 because this potential difference is also c minus 0 and this is 0 minus minus c is again uh, this c okay so i8 and i3 must be equal so i8 also is same 5 by 84 okay and now i want to uh, find out i7 why because i need to comment on this option i7 i need to find out so i7 uh, so where is i7 let's look at i7 okay so the potential difference across this i7 is e minus c so the current across this must be e minus c divided by 1 minus e into i naught simple ratio in proportion so i7 when you calculate that way you get uh, 5 by 42 i so that gives you this and this so that gives you b option being correct so b option is uh, this one i7 5 by 82 and i8 is 5 by 84 that's what we got so 5 by 87 and 5 by 84 and 5 by uh, this one uh, i7 5 by 5 by 42 i think this is 5 by 42 yes that's what uh, i'm sorry so okay so i hope you got this one similarly i can comment on other options so uh, i1 similarly i have calculated i1 is e minus f upon 1 minus e so i1 is this one so this potential difference is e minus f so e minus f upon 1 minus e into i naught that's uh, 5i by 42 sorry 3i by 28 and i9 is similarly e minus c upon 1 minus e so e minus c i9 where is i9 i9 um, okay so minus c minus minus e so that is e minus c e minus c upon 1 minus e into i naught that if that way if you calculate you get i9 as 5i by 42 and this is what is written in option c 3i by 28 and 5i uh, by 40 okay so option c 3i by 28 and 5i by 42 so option c is correct and option d is uh, you could have easily guessed because option D directly by symmetry you can see that option D is obviously correct. So it says I4 is equal to I6. So I4 is this one and I6 is this one. So from figure also you can see that even if you don't draw the potential this seems pretty obvious. But otherwise from the figure also you can see that I4 the potential difference is F minus 0. And I6 again uh, the potential difference is 0 minus minus F. So uh, that's again F. So that's, for, that's why I4 and I6 must be equal and similarly I2 and I5. So where is I2? Uh, I2 I need to locate this is I2 this is I2 so this is across F minus 0 and I5 where is I5 so this is 0 minus minus F so again uh, this current must be equal so this is D option is obviously correct so correct options B C and D now uh, I also wanted you to find out the effective resistance of the cube across the shown tap in and tap out point so now effective resistance is simple so the potential difference across the entire cube is now two volts the way i have taken so this is one volt plus one volt this is minus one volt so entire potential difference becomes two volts and now i can find out the net current entering this cube so i can find this current so this is one minus e this is one minus e and that is also one minus e three currents uh, i mean current getting divided into three parts so one minus e one minus e one minus e into three is the total current entering so I know the total potential difference is 2 volts and total so now applied voltage is 2 volts and total current entering is 1 minus e into 3 that if you calculate that's 84 by 43 ampere okay 
and therefore effective uh, resistance is simply divide you you divide the voltage by current and that comes out to be a nice number uh, 43 upon 42 ohms so uh, that's the end of this uh, question and i hope you enjoyed my presentation uh, please do uh, share like and subscribe my, to my channel and um, share this problem with your friends uh, thank you very much keep coming back to my channel